Welcome to the Childhood Feeding Collaborative online training, Helping Parents to Feed Well So Children Can Eat Well. This training is for community health workers, promotores, parent educators, or other staff who work directly with parents of young children. This training is created through the generosity of the Health Trust and supported by the Santa Clara County Public Health Department. Helping Parents to Feed Well So Children Can Eat Well and its parent education handouts and resources are part of the Public Health Department's commitment to prevent chronic disease in early childhood. The goal in providing this online training is to first empower educators like you to provide best practice child feeding education to parents. You already have many excellent skills in educating parents. Please consider this new information as building upon your existing skills. Second, as a result of the education you give parents, parents improve how they feed their children. And the third goal is to include you in a large provider community in which parents are taught best practice child feeding. Once you complete these four modules, you will join Santa Clara County pediatricians, WIC nutritionists, public health nurses, and many others in organizations like yours in educating parents in child feeding best practices. This two-hour training is divided into four modules, each about 30 minutes long. You may view each separately, or you may combine modules one and two, and three and four. I suggest that you allow a few days and up to one week of time between the modules so you can practice and build skills along the way. Each module has learning tasks that will improve your ability to provide best practice feeding education. After completing all four modules, you will be able to download your certificate of completion. This certificate should go into your personnel file as proof of learning. In Module 1, you will learn that eating is a skill children learn from their parents and what is normal eating for a child. Let's begin with Module 1. Learning Task 1 will help you identify your learning needs. Learning Tasks 2 and 3 will set the stage for understanding what children need in order to learn to eat well. These three handouts are an important part of your learning and well worth the effort it takes to use them in the suggested manner. The worksheet, Your Learning Needs, requires your written input. You can type directly onto the PDF. Before starting this training, you should have downloaded this module's handouts and printed them out or saved them onto your desktop. If you have not done that, you need to pause this training, go back to the Module 1 webpage, and open the handouts. Please access this first handout now. The worksheet lists common feeding concerns among parents of young children. There are also blanks for you to list other concerns your clients may experience. Take a few minutes to write in column two how you currently address these concerns. Save this handout as you will complete column three at the end of this module. Click pause on the presentation while you complete this task. Then go back to the presentation and click play again to start the presentation. Let's begin with learning task two. Eating is a skill children learn from their parents. No matter what the skill, in order to learn, children need a supportive learning environment. Children need parents to understand their unique learning style and speed. They need parents to know what their child is capable of learning and provide learning tasks that match the child's capability. All children need to have opportunities to practice and learn new skills. And last, parents must trust that their child can learn. Please access this handout now. Describe a skill you have taught a child on this worksheet. For example, have you taught a child how to cross the street, ride a bike, or how to handle a book? In column two, write down how you provided the child with understanding developmentally appropriate learning tasks, and opportunities to learn and trust. If you are viewing this training with others, you can also tell another person about what you have written. Take a few minutes to do this. Click and pause on the training while you complete this task. Then go back to the presentation and click play to start the presentation again. 
All parents have successfully taught their child a skill, such as how to sing a song, dance, or play a sport. Parents have these skills. I will use a sports story to show you that parents can use the same set of skills to help their children be a good eater. This is three-year-old Alex. I've been watching his dad teach him how to hit a ball with a bat. The dad understands that Alex needs the right equipment for his age, a fat, lightweight bat. He knows that Alex needs to learn developmentally appropriate rules of the game, how to hold the bat, and how to stand relative to the pitcher. I watch this dad give Alex lots of opportunities to learn by patiently throwing the ball to him nice and slow. I watched Alex miss the ball time after time. Alex's dad knows that Alex won't hit the ball at first. Alex's dad trusts that Alex can learn these skills, and this trust is reflected in all of the dad's verbal and nonverbal communication with him. Contrast this teaching style, which I believe most parents intuitively know how to do, with how we teach children how to eat. We often expect children to just know how to eat the foods we offer them. Parents are not aware that eating is a skill that must be learned from their parent. Like any other skill, learning to eat requires the parent's understanding of what their child needs in order to learn. It requires parents to provide developmentally appropriate foods and eating environment. And children need parents to provide lots of opportunities to learn to eat these new foods and to sit at the table. The parent must trust that the child is capable of learning. Too often, a child who refuses to eat a certain food, for example broccoli, for a few times, is assumed to be a broccoli hater, not a child who just needs many more opportunities to learn. It is the picky eater who most of all needs the parent's trust that someday he will eat broccoli and other foods. How can a child see himself as someone who will learn to eat broccoli someday, but just not now, when he is labeled the broccoli hater and never offered it again? Being a part of the family mealtime is also a skill children must learn from their parents. Parents put up with difficult mealtime behaviors without using the type of teaching skills they employ in their backyards. Children need parents to understand that they require developmentally appropriate expectations and rules for how to sit at the family table and to be a part of the family. The first skill children need to learn is to sit at their place at the table if they are going to eat. Parents love this story. I suggest you make this story your own and use it with parents and others. Learning task three, understand how child development influences normal eating behavior. Parents who understand child development know what skills to work on at any given stage. Children become capable with eating step by step as they develop. For a wiggly and playful child, sitting and eating can look like this. Please access the handout, Stage, Developmental Principles, and Key Concepts in Feeding Now. This handout describes how child development determines how the parent should feed. Notice the overlap in age between each of the developmental stages. This reflects the reality that normal development occurs at very different speeds for children. Notice that the handout begins with pregnant and postpartum women. How the woman feeds herself will influence how she feeds her child. For the child who is not developing typically, these developmental principles will emerge more slowly and take longer to achieve. A newborn's first developmental task is to become calm and organized. This is really all about becoming comfortable in the world outside the womb. The parent's role with feeding at this stage is to observe, understand, and then respond to the baby's cues. Parents need to understand the baby's sleep states and to feed on demand when the child is quiet and alert. Once the baby is settled, sometime between two to six months of age, she begins the wonderful stage in which she wants to connect and fall in love with her parents. The parent continues to support the baby's need to feel calm and organized by feeding on demand and by continuing to observe, understand, and respond to the baby's cues. The parent shows love to the baby so that the baby's love and trust is mirrored and supported. 
Feeding provides the ideal environment for getting on the same emotional wavelength with the baby. Sometime between five and nine months of age, the older baby begins to take an interest in what lies beyond the parent. This is an important point because parents can get upset when they are no longer the center of the child's universe. During this time period, a child shows readiness for solid foods by developing oral and motor control and taking an interest in other things. It is important for parents to know that babies develop at different rates and that readiness to eat solid food varies as a result. Perhaps during this developmental stage, the older baby may try to feed himself. This is an important cue for the parent to notice so that as the baby's interest in self-feeding grows, the parent can support this interest. It is important for parents to understand that the older baby who refuses solids is probably not developmentally ready to start solids. Parents often misinterpret this lack of readiness with not liking solid foods. Parents should wait a few weeks and try again. Include the baby in family meal times. Keep offering, but take no for an answer, even after one taste on the lip or one bite. When the parents follow the baby's cues, he will learn to eat when he is ready and feel positive about eating. Here is what parents can expect the older baby to do when she is ready to learn to eat solids. She must be able to sit up, open her mouth for the spoon, and close her lips over the spoon. She'll be able to keep most of the food in her mouth and swallow. These skills may not be obvious to the parents, especially if the child is nearing readiness. During this stage, spoon feeding goes from pureed foods to lumpier and thicker foods. When the older baby begins wanting to do things for himself, including feeding himself, we call him an almost toddler. The almost toddler is between 7 and 15 months of age. At this stage, the baby may suddenly refuse the spoon. The parent may interpret this as food refusal or may try to force him to take the spoon or even play games to try to get him to eat. To prevent feeding struggles, you can prepare parents in advance about this transition to self-feeding. If allowed to, almost toddlers delight in feeding themselves. They have a strong drive to put everything in their mouths and will eat almost anything. The parent's task is to offer safe family foods to pick up, chew, and swallow, and be ready to spoon feed if necessary. Now is the time for parents to start having family meals, if they aren't already. The structure of family mealtime becomes essential when the almost toddler turns into a toddler. The family meal is the best environment for a child's learning how to eat. Here is what parents can expect their almost toddler to do. The almost toddler is learning to drink from a cup and to feed herself. The almost toddler can be fed modified table foods that are easy to chew and easy to swallow. This is a developmental stage where the child is interested in learning to eat the family foods. The toddler is finding out that she is a separate person. The toddler tests limits, saying no a lot as a way of experiencing herself as separate and individual. Toddlers need structure in all things, including feeding. The toddler will no longer be enthusiastic about eating a variety of foods. The toddler may ignore a food that was previously enjoyed. These eating behaviors are difficult for parents who may respond by pressuring the toddler to eat. This strategy will only make the toddler's picky eating worse and create struggles for control between parent and child. The toddler may tantrum if she doesn't get her way. At the same time, it is important for the toddler to feel like a part of the family. With eating, the toddler is part of the family when she eats from what is available at family meals. She is separate when she eats only what and as much as she wants to from what parents provide. It is a mistake for parents to serve the toddler her own special foods instead of trusting her to learn the foods that the family eats. Parents must trust that their toddler is capable of eventually learning to eat the family foods.
Toddlers learn best when parents provide a routine for meals and snacks. The toddler learns to be a part of the family at mealtime. Here is what parents can expect their toddler to do. She can learn to sit at the table, in her own chair, and eat off her own plate and behave. The toddler's growth is slowed, and as a result, the toddler's appetite is decreased. Parents should not try to force the toddler to eat more than she wants. It won't work and will make mealtime miserable. The toddler will make a mess when she eats. This is normal as she is still developing eating skills. Parents can put a towel under her chair to catch the mess. The toddler is learning to use a fork and spoon, but will frequently use fingers to eat. The three to five year old preschooler is interested in learning and doing. The preschooler imitates and tries to please her parents. She is more willing to try unfamiliar food than the toddler. The parent can help the preschooler learn by including her in the family meal, making mealtimes pleasant, and keeping a routine for meals and sit-down snacks. Children should not be allowed to snack throughout the day. This makes them poor eaters at mealtime. Parents can expect their preschooler to enjoy family meals, the preschooler knows how to behave nicely at meals and understands the rules and generally follows them. The preschooler is a good learner and wants to learn. There will be less mess and mealtimes will be more relaxed and enjoyable. Preschoolers learn from watching their parents at family mealtime. The child who can do this will sooner or later learn to eat almost all the foods the parent eats. Feed the Way Your Child Can Eat is a parent handout located in the Resources folder on the Childhood Feeding Collaborative online homepage. You will leave this training when you visit the Childhood Feeding Collaborative. I encourage you to visit the Resources folder when you finish this module. Feed the Way Your Child Can Eat provides developmentally based feeding guidance for infants to almost toddlers. It is available in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. Let's apply what we have learned about child development and normal eating to the toddler. It is normal for a child to eat a lot one day and little the next. To not eat a square meal, maybe only two or three foods. To tire of even favorite foods and experiment with new food. Sit at the table, but not sit still. Enjoy being at the table, but want down when full. And rarely eat a new food for the first time they see it except for candy and french fries. Parents need to know what developmentally normal eating is for children in order to help the child learn. As their child's teacher, it is important that parents accept normal eating behaviors. On the next slide, you will watch a video of a toddler and his family during mealtime. As you watch, see if you can determine whether AJ's eating behaviors are normal for his age. Hey, good job, Dad. Something all his food. I think they're just hungry. Yeah, I'm hungry too. I know. Mm-hmm. Taco? Can I help you? Yeah. No, you don't want to take a bite? You have to hold it tight, okay? Two hands, Jediah. Two hands. Uh-oh. Hold it like this so it doesn't fall out. Come put it in. Mm -hmm. Hold it. You have to hold it really tight so it doesn't fall out. There you go. Good job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you guys can share the guacamole. Uh-oh, uh -oh. fell apart. Did it break? Yeah. Oh, no. It's 
since you did your homework? No. No? No, I still do lots of stuff. I do notes, I got my homework. Falling in my face. Falling in my you face. Is it falling on your face? Yeah. Look at who. Lucky Putty. Lucky Putty. Lucky Putty. Eat it, son. Walk them all. Put it in your mouth and eat it. Lucky Putty. Lucky Putty. Yeah, who dropped that? Who did it? You! I dropped all that food on the floor. Are you done, sweetie? No, oh, are you gonna help me clean it? <laughs> so, Dad, we'll clean that after, son. Come over here and wash your hands with us. Hey, coming. Are you ready? Wash your hands in your face? No! I'm coming. I'm coming, mommy. I'm coming. Okay, come on. Hey, wash your hands. AJ behaves like a normal child, at least from what we can determine by watching him at one meal. He doesn't sit still, is messy, eats but doesn't eat everything, and he enjoys being at the table with his family. Let's watch the video again with a narration by feeding expert Ellen Satter. Two-year-old AJ and his sister Tiara are having a meal of tacos, chips, and guacamole. Four and a half year old Tiara has the coordination to manage this tricky food. It remains to be seen how AJ does with it. Annie and Nick have used their ingenuity to provide the children with comfortable seating at the same time as they participate in the family meal. Because AJ is hungry and enjoys eating, he stays in his chair and pays attention to his meal. AJ has trouble managing this taco, but typical toddler, he doesn't want help. Once he gets started, he successfully hangs on to it and has a bite. The problem is he puts it down. He doesn't understand the laws of gravity, and when he picks it up again, all the filling falls out. This time, it's okay to have a little help. Another successful bite. AJ keeps an eye on his parents while he eats. Clearly, their being there is important to him. I know the taco's a lost cause, but even though it's broken, it still works for directing the music that only AJ can hear. All right, let's try some meat. That's what spoons are for. Well... I guess they're for picking up the meat to put it into your fingers. AJ is making a mess, but he's not doing it on purpose. He's doing his level best to eat his meal. Tierra, for her part, is not bothered by his antics. More conversation with mom and dad. He so enjoys having them there. More little songs that only AJ can hear. He's horsing around, but he's still eating. He just has trouble sitting still, and he isn't bothering anyone. If he starts to be a bother, it generally means he's full, and he can leave. He doesn't have to stay there until everyone else finishes. Yeah, that? AJ's full, and his attention wanders. He knows the mess on the floor and tells his mother that she made it. He gets down and begins working on the mess. His mother warns him not to brush the food onto the carpet. He ignores that. Come on, AJ. Time to wash your hands. Annie picks him up and hauls him off. She's not alarmed by AJ's protests. To learn more about feeding toddlers, explore the link embedded in the PDF for this module or visit the Ellen Satter Institute website. You can pause this presentation to give yourself time to review the online information. Childhood Feeding Collaborative has other related handouts available in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. You'll find this in the Resources folder on the home page. 
You'll learn more about feeding toddlers in the next modules. You have learned that eating is a skill children learn from their parents or caregivers. You have also learned what is normal eating for a child. Now, how will you respond differently when you educate parents about their child feeding concerns? Please write your thoughts in column three. Take a few minutes to do this task. Click pause on the training while you complete the task. Then go back to the presentation and click play to start the presentation again. Additional program materials are located on the Childhood Feeding Collaborative webpage. The resource folder includes classes and other resources to which you can refer your clients. You'll also find useful websites and trainings to further your understanding of how to help parents feed well so children can learn to eat. In the next module, Module 2, you will be asked to reflect again on your learning from this first module. This concludes Module 1.